you know, there, there's a really wonderful section in this movie where your, I guess, your cinematic character, your alter ego, or you in, in cinema form, takes a little bit of time off. Maybe I think it was having some kind of dessert or cheesecake, maybe at the plaza. And it's just yeah. taking taking some time out for oneself. And I think one of this movie's many strengths is it does take a, it tells a story without all these just ridiculous slapstick you know all, all these uh, trimmings to it you know you have Sigourney Weaver she could have been an over-the-top character but ultimately this movie is a very subtle and and subtle telling of the story of a human's uh, journey as an as an artist and was that one of the reasons why you really loved the way this movie ended up yes absolutely I mean when we were um you know shopping the book around there was a lot of interest and I talked to a lot of different producers you know and people at big studios and both my film agent and I felt really strongly, even before we talked to Philippe, that he was probably the right person to do this based um, mostly on his, um, at that point, his most recent film, which was called Monsieur Lazare, um, which is a similar film. I don't know if you've seen it, yeah. but it is, I mean, visually it's gorgeous. So there's that. So we, we felt like he would really be able to kind of capture the way the book looks, but more important, that was sort of the, not the most important part though, important, but more importantly, we felt that he was really a master filmmaker who would be able to kind of open this book up while staying true to the real story. Like, as you said, it is, you know, what is known as a Kunstler Roman. It's like an artist's coming of age. Um, and it's also, you know, a, I mean, I thought of it as a feminist book. It's a book about a, a young girl finding her way um, in a universe um, in a kind of like professional universe that is definitely kind of dominated by men and kind of seeing like, what are my models here? You know, who do I want to be? Do I want to be my friend Jenny who has decided to get married and move to the suburbs? Do, you know, and just forget about her career. Do I want to be my boss who's decided to not have a conventional um, romantic or domestic life um, and has made her work? her life. Like, who do I want to be? Do I want to be neither of these people? What do I want to be? What do I want to do? Um, so we, anyway, point is that we, we really felt like that um, Philippe understood that on a really fundamental level and that he would make a film that was really true to the spirit of the book. And he did. Regarding understanding the book and more importantly, understanding your life, how, how much brownie points did Margaret earn when you realize that not only did she read your memoir, but she's also an innate reader who read some of your recommendations. Did, did she win you over immediately? And how much of an addition was she to, to, to the overall, you know, canvas of your the film? She was a huge addition. And I should, will go back and explain that she was attached to the project from pretty early on. She was my first choice for the role. Um, I had seen her in The Leftovers and there was just an innate brilliance to her. You could see that she was a true intellectual in a way, um, and also a person who kind of felt things very deeply, um, just a very sensitive person um, who registered emotion, who was attuned to people around her. I just could tell from her performance in The Leftovers, and um, I felt a sort of dorky kinship with her in the way that you sometimes do when you see actors and things and you think, I get that person. I mean, I know it sounds ludicrous, but I did. And so she was attached early on. And so she had a lot of time to kind of think through this role and prepare for it. Um, and so she earned a lot of brownie points um, when she said, to, you know, we were, um, we were sort of standing, you know, on set, you have a lot of time to stand around and talk. And we were kind of standing around talking and she said, you know, I really loved um, Foreign Affairs, um, which is an Alice and Laurie novel that is now not widely read. And I said, you've read that? And she was like, yeah, I read all the books that you mentioned, um, but that was my favorite. Um, and, and I thought, oh my God, this is an extraordinary person we have here. 